First ever stupid show. We're coming at you live and direct, hopefully, if Dad's laptop's working over there, from the UN Climate Summit, otherwise known as COP15, otherwise known as the most important meeting in human history. And we are here to help you understand what the fuck is going on, because take it from me, it's extremely complicated and we can't understand it. Uh, my name is Franny Armstrong. And <laughs> I am the director of a movie called The Age of Stupid, which was described uh, through known as the Telegraph newspaper as the, mo the second most toe-curlingly emetic and risable movie in the history of British cinema, other than love, actually. So don't bother seeing our film because it's rubbish. The plan here is that we're going to be webcasting live from Copenhagen for uh, every day from now uh, till the end of the conference next week, uh, next Friday, uh, other than Sunday, because we're having a day off to have a little sing-song around the piano. Uh, now, I know you're all thinking that CNN or BBC has very kindly lent us their studio, but no, that's not true. Uh, the way this is working is that we, have, we are being sponsored here by One Climate. Look at these guys with their Mac laptops. They are filming me, filming you. There's my dad. There's Lizzie. She's the producer of the film. Lizzie's doing things there. They're doing things. Three Mac laptops are involved with that thing. Two Mac laptops over there are involved in sending out Twitter feeds. Have fun. And uh, all of this stuff that we're filming here on these laptops is going out by a giant cable uh, to not a big satellite truck, uh, but to uh, a camper van, which somehow managed to get a pass into the uh, outside broadcast uh, area. And uh, I think basically a cable connects the internet from us to the internet from them, and it's going out via the camper van to you all, all around the world. Hopefully, uh, if that works, who knows if it's working or not. But we'll soon know if it's working because you can contact us here on The Stupid Show at any time by emailing us, texting us, or tweeting us. In fact, we'd really appreciate it if you did tweet us. There's our hashtag, Stupid Show. Uh, that'd be great. And just to make a slightly lateral point, um, I know that we're doing really, really badly with climate change and everything, but you have to say that the media is going quite well in that, uh, with you know basically no cash, thanks to all our sponsors, by the way, who've invested, who gave us money to sponsor every little item, like these guys are sponsored, the cameras are sponsored, thanks to you all. Um, basically, with me and my dad, these guys, these guys here, uh, we can do what it used to take 100 people and uh, the whole BBC and what have you to do, whether it's any good or not. Uh, only time will tell. But one of the great things about it is that there's nobody in charge and there's no grown-ups, which means we can swear as much as we want. Fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> and um, we heard the other day, you know the guy in, uh, in the thick of it? We've heard that he, that actor, is uh, really into climate change. And uh, we don't know him, but if anybody watching knows him, can you please get him to get in touch with us? Because we really, really want him to do one of his tirades of abuse. So we can intercut that with any time any uh, the Saudi Arabians or somebody uh, come up with some climate denial stuff. So please get in touch. <sighs> okay, we're going to go to a video now and see how we got to Copenhagen. It's quite interesting. We are in video. Brussels. Uh, and we're about to get on the Climate Express, which is a very special train, apparently, that the UN have put on, um, which is going to be going all through uh, Europe, picking up people and taking them to Copenhagen, of course. Uh, right, let's go and find this train. So the deal was we would screen the film if they would put our logo on the train. I wonder if they have. Can't see it yet, I have to say. There it is! On the train! 
for us, it's an opportunity to um, to talk about uh, sustainable transport and how that's contributing to the green economy. And that's really a very strong theme for us here. I thought it was about having a good time and getting to meet all the right people. No? <laughs> Franny, hopefully that hopefully that'll happen as well. And of course, the highlight at the end of the day will be a screening of the age of stupid. <laughs> important information to give before talking about the science that we are I'm, re I'm really sorry to say that but we are on the wrong track and we have been on the wrong track for some time unfortunately I mean this is really troublesome because the train is accelerating I mean we need to, to we would need to break actually because the, the, the faster we go the faster if we hit something will have um, severe impact uh, well, at least we are in first class here, so the impact should not be as severe as um, the poor guys who are in second or third class uh, in the front of the train. Meanwhile, the eight-strong Team Stupid uh, is battling, are battling their way across the North Sea in, I suspect, slightly less uh, comfortable surroundings. We're on the boat to Denmark with about every other climate activist in the UK. And in fact, the port we're just going past here has just signed up to 1010. You probably can't see it, but just over there, there are six wind turbines being built up on the site to help them reach their 1010 commitment. Every film, every book, every scientific report, all stored on banks of service. So we invented this system that we call crowdfunding, which is like, in the end, um, I think, I can't remember, but it's about 350 people invested in this film. The Age of Stupid is the most beautiful film, the, most, the, the best film I ever saw in the world. Really? Really. <laughs> That went surprisingly well. It was actually really good fun. I think being on the train and all being squashed in kind of in a weird way gave us all a feeling of like we're all in this together. We're heading for Copenhagen. We've got to save the day. Yes. So now on to more serious things. Yes, apparently there's free champers in the bar. But... Limousine, is he? Shit's not here. We are. So, if you weren't on the train there and you did miss the screening of our film, uh, it is on basically everywhere in Copenhagen. You can't move uh, without uh, seeing it on a boat or a cube or in the conference centre here. Uh, it's also on TV in eight countries uh, during Copenhagen, including the BBC, which we're very excited about. That's next Monday. Uh, if you can't see any of them, then just download it like everybody else is off BitTorrent and rip off the 350 people who invested in our film. All the old ladies who gave us their money, yeah, just go for it. Um, apparently, we're the number one pirate uh, DVD on the streets of Beijing this week as well, which we're very excited about. Anyway, back to climate change, enough plugs of our film. We're going to have our first guest now, Mr. Mark Linus, who you may recognise if you've seen that film as the man in the shed. Hi, Mark. Hello, How Connie. are you? All right, Hello. mate. Lovely to see you again. Oh, wait, wait. My, my board, please. <laughs> so, Mark, climate yes. change. How's it going? Oh, um, well, at the moment, actually, I was just speaking to... Hang on. Thank you. I was just speaking to uh, Richard Betts of the Hadley Centre, yeah. you know, one of the world's premier scientific institutions. He told me if the world wants to keep uh, temperature rise down to 1.5 degrees, which is the policy of all the small island states because it will keep them above sea level, yeah. we would have to have peak emissions on Wednesday. <laughs> now it's now Friday, so we're two days over, so we've really got to get our act together. But you're being week. very rebellious already, because in the film it says, and in fact all the G8 are saying we've got to stabilise at two degrees. So first, tell me why you're being rebellious. And then we're going to explain what the hell this degrees business is about. Well, the two degrees target has been agreed by the EU and by the big countries, and it's been in place for um, 
since the, since the big G8 summit actually a couple of years yeah. ago. So this is the target which all of the big countries feel able to, to stick to. Yeah. The problem is that that won't save the Maldives and it won't save the world's coral reefs, it won't save the, the, the Greenland glaciers, it won't save the Himalayan glaciers which of course produce water for 